Hey, hey. Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, everyone. If you guys can hear me, throw me some hearts and let me know you can hear me. Say hello as you're hopping on. Share this live. Invite some friends. Don't be strangers. Come and chill with me for a few. How are y'all doing on this Thursday? Alexa, stop. It does not feel like the week is coming to an end already. Today has been a great day. Today has been a restful day. Today, God told me I kind of need to take a, a break from myself. And I actually listened and did what I was supposed to do. I feel rested. I feel well rejuvenated. What is going on with each and every one of you? Let me make sure I'm connected on YouTube as well. Well, as you guys can see, the title of my message is He Got Jokes. <laughs> Y'all, I promise God has a sense of humor. God really does have a sense of humor. And oftentimes we think, you know, he's this form of energy. He's the spirit that just sits up in heaven with authority and he's stern and he's firm and he just does this and does that and he doesn't have reactions or emotions. But if we're made in his image, then as we laugh and have a sense of humor, God has a sense of humor also. And I was speaking to a few of my um, business partners and some of the uh, ladies who joined me last night. First off, last night on our uh, How to Hear from God, that live workshop that I hosted last night, it was absolutely amazing. And I'm just honored and humbled by God to be used. And I say all of that to say one of the things we talked about last night is we don't get to pick and choose how God uses us. And God has a sense of humor because even so today, he reminds me quite often, but even so today, and you guys can feel free to comment and leave me um, some feedback and let me know if you're going through this or you have experienced this or have a similar uh, situation. But even so much today, he reminded me, even though what you're going through hurts and you don't like what you're going through, or you don't like how you're going through it, I'm honoring your prayer. I'm giving you the very thing that you pray to me about every day, day after day, consistently. And when I think about it, you know, when we pray, I, I say he has a sense of humor because when we pray for patience, God doesn't just sprinkle patience out of heaven. He's going to test you and put you in a situation where you're forced to be patient. If you're paying for strength, he doesn't just equip you with strength. That's just, that's not his character. That's not how God works. So when we pray for strength, he's going to put you in a situation, more so a test or several tests where your strength is required, where your strength is now uh, cultivated. And and uh, what am I trying to say? You start gaining strength. You start enduring strength. You start being able to express your strength more. Anything you pray for, our human minds think that he's kind of going to just sprinkle it from heaven and bless us with that. And that's not how it works. The very thing you pray for, part of my prayer every day is God use me. I'm an empty and willing vessel. Decrease me and increase on the inside of me. And God is like, even though I'm using you and it hurts right now and you don't like the way that I'm using you, I'm doing the very thing that you asked me to do. So anyone that's on here, I really just want to get on here just to encourage you. When God uses you and takes you through storms and trials, when you're praying for strength, when you're praying for patience, when you're praying for peace, um, even when you're praying for peace, thank you, Jesus, he's going to put you in situations that require you to learn how to use your peace more, the spirit of peace. Everything that you're praying for, you're going to be put up against something that's going to help you strengthen the very thing that you're praying for. So if you guys feel like you're in a situation where I don't like how this feels, when God uses us, first off, it's an honor to be used by God. It it can be frustrating with how he uses you. It really can. If we're being transparent and being honest, it I'm sorry. It can be frustrating with how God picks and uh, chooses to use you. We never know how we're going to be used. That's not for us to know. But if we're an empty and willing vessel and we're like, Lord, decrease me and increase on the inside of me. I'm yours. I want what you have for me. Hey, Patrice, how are you doing, sis? I want what you have for me. We can't say, God, use me for your glory. Use me however you see fit. Use me to build the kingdom. But you can only use me this way, this way, and not this way over here. 
That's not how it works. I promise it's not how it works. And I was telling my mom about this this morning when we were doing our morning walk. If I could say this without stepping on toes, and if it steps on toes, Lord, forgive me, but if it's conviction, let's call it like it is. I blame the churches and the pastors at times because I was telling my mom, and you guys can let me know how you feel about this. Please keep it appropriate and respectful. I will say that. When we go to church, many churches, most churches make us only tell us about the tangible things that God does. You know, when you get home, there's going to be a check in the mail and God is going to increase your credit score and God is going to bless you with that home that you've been praying for. And God is going to give you a promotion for your job and God is going to increase you and God is going to use you. And that new car, your dream car is about to be in your driveway or in your garage. We hear about those things, but they fail for the ones that I've been a part of or seen. They fail to tell us about what about when God hurts you? What about when God breaks you? And he's not hurting you to hurt you, but the feeling that we have is our reaction is it hurts. What about when he breaks you? What about when he crushes you? What about when he lets you go through pains and through trials to get to the very thing that he's promising you? So my opinion is that I blame many of the uh, churches and pastors and what God has been speaking to me about. That's a part of this whole pandemic and world shutdown. I'm not saying God caused all of this, but God is going to use it for his glory. We have a lot of false teachings and it's more so every pastor that stands up in the pulpit has gone through the process of being called by God or supposedly being called by God. And when you're called, they tell you about the good parts of it. But where are those transparent pastors that speak? Hey, um, you're going to go through this. And when God calls you, it doesn't feel good. Once you say yes, he's going to come in and break you. He's going to mold you. He's going to crush you. He's going to prone you. He's going to take you through the fire to purify you. Yes, those things are very necessary for growth. Darian, I agree. But churches or the churches that I've attended, I can't speak for every church. And this is not finger pointing at every pastor. So that's why I say take this not as conviction or finger pointing, but I'm speaking from personal experience. So it just, it's unfortunate that many, that's why many never fulfill the very thing that God has called for them to do because they go to church and many of them are hurt by church people. Many of them are hurt in church because the pastor preached all it is to have you hallelujah and running through the church. But then when you get home Monday through Saturday, your life feels like hell and you're running, hitting up against brick walls and you can't catch a break. They don't tell us about the times that God is in that too and that God is in those attacks and that there's purpose in that also. And unless we are educated on these things, I think this is the time that God has not only been dealing with me, but been speaking to me about he's called like the earth is groaning for truth. He's, he's bringing forth his sons and his daughters you know, now in this new generation, you're going to have new evangelists raised up, new apostles, new prophets, new priests, new new elders, new deacons, those who are actually speaking full truth, full transparency about God, because it's a lot of false teaching. And God has just been dealing with me saying, not only has is he going to use all of this for his glory, but he's getting ready to reveal and expose a lot of false prophets, a lot who have been dealing with false teachings. The church was always made up for man. If you read in the Bible, like Jesus didn't preach in a building. He was in the middle of the city. He was, he was, he was standing in a boat, you know, preaching, standing on top of the mountains, preaching. We built these churches. We built mega churches. We built flashy lights and all of that. And I'm not against any of that, but don't speak to the people you as have any authority that God has given you to speak, or you're a prophet or whatever your role is in the kingdom be 100% truthful. Don't neglect the parts that God is in the pain also, just because you want your congregation to run through the church more and a hoop and holler. And many who don't know that that's a side of God, that that's a process of being called, that that's a part of the transition, that that's a part of pruning, that they don't know that God is in that. Also, I blame the churches. I blame the churches for how they've been preaching and teaching for many years now. So now not only has this world pandemic caused us to get back to what the church has always been, preaching it from home, doing it with the family, starting in the home first. Now those sons and daughters are going to be forced and caused to rise up. I'm speaking as one of them. I'm seeing signs of God now 
if you know his character, you will know that anything that he takes you through, it's, it's not to harm you. It feels like that. It feels like the enemy. I'm not going to sit here and uh, make you guys feel like it's, it's all peaches and cream when God calls you. The calling is heavy. And the heavier the calling, the bigger the reward that's waiting for you also. But this calling I carry is heavy. This mantle I carry is heavy. This anointing that I have is heavy. I didn't ask for this. But it comes with the territory. It comes with what God has called for me to do. So I just want to encourage anyone that's on here. If God is just taking you through, I'll put it like this. Thank you, Jesus. If you feel like you're just going through, God is in that too. If it hurts, he's in that. If you're losing sleep, he's in that. If you're, if it's keeping you up at night, he's in, in that exactly for all for his glory. And I just feel like if the churches would have properly educated us all these years before and let us know that even in the pain, that's for his glory, that's for his purpose, and God is in that too. You just keep telling me in church that it's going to be a check when I get home in the mail, that the house that I've been praying for, God wants to give me, that that dream car, y'all know how these pastors speak. Oh, that dream car that you want? Go to the dealership and start just sitting in those cars. Is God about to bless you with that? And it's going to be in your driveway. Your credit jacked up, God is getting ready to put you at an 800 credit score. I prophesy over the next six months, you're getting ready to have that 800 credit score. And that, that home, go ahead and start looking for those homes. I'm not saying that stuff is not true. God does work miracle signs and wonders in that way. But please don't leave out the part that God will break me. Also, that there's a process to get to that new house. That there's a process to have that shiny car in a driveway. There's a process to get that job promotion. There's a process when you're being called. There's a process when he wants to use you. There's a process because you failed to tell me that I got to suffer with Christ before I reign with Christ. Yes, that's in my Bible. But as your sheep and you're my shepherd, I look to you to be fed. I look to you to tell me and keep it real. I don't know the Bible. I didn't study the Bible. I wasn't called by God. So if you were called, you were supposed to educate me on this, but you only told me about the good, tangible things about God. Yes, God is good. God is amazing. And I'm not getting on here and saying God is bad. No, please don't misinterpret or take my, my words out of context. But what I am saying is that many times it's always left out the times that it hurts when God uses you. And it's a necessary pain. It's a necessary change. The anointing that many of us possess there's a process to go through it. God will take you through the fire to purify you. You cannot walk with Christ with a bitter heart. You cannot speak um, and be used by God with hatred in your heart and bitterness in your heart and anger in your heart and all of this. But if the pastors would have kept it real, I, I honestly think if the pastors would have been 100% transparent, and you do have some transparent pastors out there, hands down to them. But I believe if they would have kept it transparent in 100 from the beginning, more people would be using their gifts. More people would be kingdom builders. More people would be doing the very thing that God called for them to do. More people would know what to expect. And maybe it's my ignorance. So I'll take that. God just blessed the mess out of a situation that I've been stressed out about. I'm so happy to hear that, sis. Maybe it was my ignorance of not knowing that. But I didn't know, like the children of Israel, when God said he was going to set them free from Egypt, he told them that they had a promised land, Canaan, right? But God doesn't, he didn't tell them everything else that they had to go through and endure to get the very thing that he promised them. Church speaks about Egypt and you being in slavery and then your promised land. You left out the wilderness. You left out that valley of dry bones. You left all of that out. So therefore, people like myself who go through that, the first thing we think is this is not of God. And that's why most people run from God or run away from the church because they've been hurt by church people. And if we, if those of us who were called by God and used by God would, would humble ourselves to a, a, in a way for God to fully use us. And I'm not saying that God is not using them. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I do feel as if a lot of things they leave out just because they, they want the hoops and hollers. They want the running around the church. Tell me everything. That, tell me this pain that I'm feeling or this pain that I'm experiencing that God is in that too. Tell me that these storms that I face that God is in that too. 
tell me that these attacks that the devil has up against me, that God allowed that for a reason, for a purpose, you leave all of that out. So therefore, if, if it's with myself, thank God that I just trusted God to endure this pain and everything that went through it. Because I can see why so many people run and go the other way because the first thing they think, this is not of God. Because at church, they promised me my credit score was going up. I was going to get a house. You know, I was going to have all this money in the bank to go sit in a new car that I wanted on in a, at the dealership. That's what they promised me. And then the rest of the week when my life felt like hell, I felt like I was under attack. So I stopped going to church. I started running from God. This is not true story. I'm just giving you guys an example. And that's what people do. And that's the very reason why many aren't walking into their calling. Yes, sis, I do know your story. I could imagine church hurt is real. We they, they leave so much out, but God is such a good God. Just trust him. If you take the time, and I'm happy that he took the time to not only use me, God used me even when I didn't want to be used. God used me when I didn't understand it. God used me when I, he didn't give up on me when I wanted to give up on myself. God pushed me. He kept pulling me up. He kept speaking great things over me. He started to reveal what I look like. I started to see on the outside the very thing that he placed on the inside. And it's making sense. And I'm. he encouraged me today, get on here and tell my people about that. Tell my children how good I am. Tell them to trust me even through their storms. Tell them to trust me even though they're in a fire right now. Tell them to trust me even though they're sitting in the lion's den right now. Tell them to trust me even though they're in that valley of dry bones. Tell them to trust me even though their past to hurt them. Tell them to trust me even though they're in the dark and they are so confused about everything that's going on. God is just saying, trust him. And if I'm part of my prayer every morning is God, send me. Does it hurt? Absolutely. But send me. Send me, allow me to be your bridge. Allow, who can I bring back to the kingdom? Who can I speak life into today? Who can I be a bridge to close the gap to bring someone back to you today? Who can I help to be in a, a situation for someone to seek you, turn from them wicked ways, humble themselves and repent? So if he's going to send me like he's doing now, I have to trust that he's going to fill my mouth and equip me. We need more that are going to rise up and, and speak, not only from experience, but speak from truth. I never want to speak. Prophets are judged differently. I, I've told you guys this before, because even with me being a prophet, not only when I speak, I have to speak the way God gave it to me. I can't leave nothing out and I can't fluff it just for my own flesh. And a lot of prophets do that. They are more so God tested me with that, too, even with my prophetic gift. I'm going to send you out to deliver some some pleasant prophetic messages. I was excited. Who I get to bless today, God. Who I get to uh, speak life into today, God. But then I also had to go through that testing. Will you go deliver this message if it's about destruction, if it's about a warning, if they're going to reject the very message that I'm sending you to say? I had to go through that also. And a true prophet is going to tell you exactly what God said the way he said it. I can't promise you peace if God said there's going to be destruction. I can't promise you this if God says, nope, this is a warning. You need to give it to him like this. I have to realize that even as a prophet, some of my words will pierce your heart. Does it? I have to take me out of it. It's not about how I feel. I can't because then God judges me different. I told you to tell them it wasn't going to peace, but you left that part out for your own, for you. You didn't do it for me. That's me being disobedient. That's me rebelling against him. And too many prophets are out here only wanting to make you feel warm and fuzzy about everything. Everything God says is not warm and fuzzy, does not leave you with the warm and fuzzy. Let's keep it 100. There are things that God says that confuses you, that frustrates you, that upsets you, that hurts you, that breaks you, that just leaves you in awe and not always in a good way. But there's a purpose in that too. And if we will have more that will stand up as true prophets and deliver the full message, not just the part you want your congregation to hear, not just the part that you want your social media platform to hear. If God is trusting me with my social media platform, I have to prove that I'm going to be worthy of being used as his mouthpiece and hands and feet here on the earth. Before he will trust me with a bigger platform, 
to deliver prophetic messages to 2,000 people. Can he trust me with 20 people first? Too many are out there worried about how many likes and followers they're going to get just off the word they're given. Did you give me the whole word God told you or only the part you wanted me to hear? Only the part that was going to get you more likes. Only the part that was going to make your influence go up more. Because the same God who gives those spiritual gifts is the same God who will take his spirit away from you and take those gifts away. It's some pastors that need to hear this prophets too. Ashley, this is not even an easy message to deliver. That's why I said I'm open for whatever, you know, anybody's opinion, but keep it respectable. Like don't get on here and, and say anything sideways because your girl will block. But it's so many, you know, when God is like, go forth and say this. You want me to say this publicly? Like this could be stepping on some toes. Remember, a true prophet is going to give it to you like, like they're getting it. Yes, it's all done to bring you closer to God and his word. And I just wish more would just stand up and say that. I really believe if more, I'm not even going to say all of the prophets and all of the pastors and all those who have been called by God. But if we have more that were being 100% transparent and showing their vulnerable side also, you were called by God. Was it easy? Was it hard? Did you, did you rebel against God? Did you resent him sometimes? Were you frustrated with him certain times? Because if you tell me that now I can understand that if I go through it also, oh, pastor, so-and-so preached about this. So this is okay that I'm going through this. But no, so-and-so stood up in the pulpit. God called me and I had this calling and this happened and that happened. And next thing I know, you know, I was, I was making all this money and God is just so good. And he increased my income and increased my tithes. You're telling me about all the good tangible things. But be vulnerable, be transparent. How did that feel? Did How did that breaking process feel? Because if you tell me that God broke you and took you through the wilderness, that didn't feel good. And when you leave that part out, when I have to go through that, now I'm blaming the pastor. Now I'm blaming the church. Now I'm running from God thinking this is not of him and that the enemy is just after me. But we got to remember, that's why I, I get in your Bibles yourself. I'm not telling anybody to not go to churches. I, I love watching sermons on YouTube. That's how I get fed. But I also have a very strong spirit of discernment. And now God is, he's, he's strengthening my discernment even more. I know some are just up there to fluff things up. Yes, we do need words of encouragement. I get that. But be 100% truthful with me. Be transparent with me. Be honest with me. Let me know that God is in this too. It's never about us. It's, it's all about him, sis. I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. Also, leaders said allow all types of help. All help isn't good help. I agree. And everybody that says they're being used by God is not. That's why when I tell you 2020 is a year of vision, God is going to be revealing a lot of false prophets, a lot of false teachings. And we got to use our discernment to know everybody who speaks about God is not filled with God, was not sent by God. I encourage all of you to pray for discernment. The devil was once, and he's a fallen angel. He knows the Bible. He knows scripture. He knows the word. You will have those that possess the evil spirit that have been sitting in church for years, and you won't know it because you refuse to uh, guard your spiritual gates and have discernment to know that the enemy's been sitting right next to you in the pews for years. Everybody who speaks in the name of the Lord was not sent by him. Just because they sound good, just because they pray good, just because their, their voice is sounds angelic, everybody's not filled with the Holy Spirit. But it is not my job or anyone else's to expose or reveal anyone. That's God's job. I would also be convicted. And there are times he's revealed certain people to me and their motives. And I felt my heart hardening up and God had to, he had to check me and let me know. I revealed this person to you for you to guard your heart, but not harden your heart towards them. When I feel my heart getting hard towards certain ones that God has exposed me or certain things that God has exposed me to, I humble myself and pray, God, soften my heart, make my heart more like yours. Test my heart, check my heart, purify my heart. So he will reveal things to me. And it's not my job to expose and reveal. God is going to do that. He's going to tear everything down that is not of him. He's already started doing that. 
I didn't learn about the breaking, crushing, and burning process from church. I didn't either, sis. I grew up in a church. Family members that are, are pastors and ministers in my family that never educated me on that. And that's why I said, maybe it's my ignorance because I didn't take time to read the Bible for myself. But as sheep, I have to trust that what my shepherd is telling me is all true. I'm not saying that these pastors are up here um, speaking falsely, but they're leaving parts out. And if you are a prophet, the Bible states that God said, give it to them the way I told you. Tell my people X, Y, Z, if I sent you to deliver a warm, heartfelt message, deliver it the way I gave it to you. If I sent you to say this is a warning, turn from your wicked ways. I'm sending destruction. I'm tearing this down. I'm doing. I have to deliver that. A true prophet of God has to deliver it the exact way God gave it to them. Some pastors only give you that word that will get money in the pot, pass the collection plate. The Lord said, "Get ready for a miracle," but there's a storm before it. Yeah, you you failed to tell me about the storm. I don't discredit the fact that my God is amazing and he does miracle signs and wonders. He split the Red Seas and had the children of Israel walking on dry ground. But did you tell me about the part where they were in the wilderness for 40 years? No. And it was only supposed to be 40 days, but it turned out to be 400 years. Did you tell me about the part that when God set the children of Israel free as they were going to Canaan, there was a shorter and quicker route to Canaan, but God took them on a longer route to go through more trials and to prepare them for upcoming uh, battles? Did you tell me about when the children of Israel were to possess Canaan, they still had to go in there and possess the land to take over the land, meaning I could not just walk into the land, that there's something I had to do still to get the very thing that God promised me? When you leave all of that out, it causes those that trusted you and looked up to you to now be bitter to the very purposeful thing that God was created to do. That's why God's like, let me tear all of this down. Let me destruct all of this. Let's start from scratch. It's time for me. The earth is growing. Let me rise up my sons and daughters. Though it's, it's new leadership coming in. That's right. Don't water down God's word. I just wish more people, more leadership would be transparent when it comes to God, because now that I'm in this position and I'm not claiming to be some almighty anything, I'm humbling myself to be used by God and on here now speaking the truth about something that's been covered up for a long time. That's truth being left out caused me to straight. And Patrice, I appreciate your honesty with that. You know how many people leave the church because of that? You know how many people run from God because of that? You know how many people miss out on their calling because of that? You know how many people never got to fulfill their purpose because of that? And yes, we all can get a Bible, but not everybody. I know I was one who could not understand the Bible to save my life, if I'm being honest. It was like foreign language to me. But when you allow God to use you, like now I can read the Bible and this speaks life into my situation. You hear me? Like this is a living word. It's like the words come up off the pages. But I was not always there. So even if I'm the one who has enough courage, because it's, it's not in my own power, that God has equipped me and given me the courage to speak up on a situation that has been covered up and muffled up and swept under the rug for too long, then I'm honored to be used by that. Hence the reason why God is restoring his people, raising up an army. You're right about that, sis. <laughs> I'm so thankful he is in me and loves me so much that not even the church could keep me away from him. Get to know God for yourself. God desires for each and every one of us to have an intimate relationship with him. And like I said, man built the church, made these big flashy mega churches. I'm not knocking any of them because I watched several of them on YouTube and love the word that they deliver. But we, many things were covered up or not fully explained and I'm just speaking from experience about the churches that I was a part of, about the messages that I've received. There was a lot of things left out. That's why this very thing that God is doing in my life now, I didn't think it was from God. I didn't think God could allow me to go through so much pain. If I'm in a fire, I'm like, maybe God forgot about me. Maybe just my, my, my better days, I've already lived those. But church didn't tell me about that. Church told me about the miracle. Church told me about the promised land, but church didn't tell me about the storm. I didn't know about that breaking process, the crushing process, the pruning process, 
how God will take you and press you down to get the very thing out of you that he's placed inside of you, to get that oil out of you, that he literally crushes you. They didn't tell me about all of that. They didn't tell me the process to go through getting to my promised land. You are anointed. You are anointed and appointed. Yes, I left church for a brief time and was mad at God. Many are, sis, and that's the sad part about it because you got those who stand in his, who are supposed to be his mouthpiece, but doing it more for flesh. He gave me grace and sent a stranger to my door. He said, God spoke to her and sent her to me. He is mindful. God, God will make sure his, he's making sure his word is being delivered the way it was intended to be. Thank you for being transparent. I, I just, this is all God. I'm not going to sit on here and take credit for any of this. Yes, when you allow yourself to be used by God, his word becomes so clear. It definitely does. Like you said, discernment and learning the word for ourselves is essential. And if there are things that you don't know, just ask God to help you to reveal it. God, what does this mean? I'm reading this and I can't understand it. God desires to make his word known for you to understand it. He doesn't want you to read the Bible and not understand what you're reading. But I encourage each and every one of you, pick up your Bibles for yourselves. Read your Bibles for yourselves. Ask God to show you on the outside what he's placed on the inside. Ask God to start to reveal to you, um, to open your spiritual eyes and spiritual ears so you could be mindful when there's false teachings. We got false teachings on social media now. Now that the churches have closed down and shut down, everybody's on social media going live, delivering a prophetic word. I'm not against that. But who is actually filled with his Holy Spirit? Ask God for discernment. God is going to reveal, not only reveal, God is going to expose those with false teachings. I just did a live saying to ask God for his advice. Ask God. Whatever it is you want to know, whatever situation you're put in front of, ask God. If I would have known, and again, back to the title of my message, he got jokes. God, why did you allow my marriage to go through all of this? I needed a marriage that I could trust. I needed, I needed a union that I could trust. And God had to let me know if your marriage looked picture perfect from inside out, how can I get glory out of that? Yes, it looks like your marriage is highly favored and you got kingdom in your marriage, but I can't get any glory out of that if those on the outside looking in think it, thinks everything is perfect. But if I allow some things to go on, I can turn that mess into a message. So when God has to remind me and he will remind, I'm, I'm doing the very thing you asked me to do. You said you are an empty and willing vessel. You said decrease you and increase on the inside of you. You said allow your marriage to be an example of my grace and my glory and kingdom. So if I'm allowing it to be an example, don't be upset about how I do it. Just trust me. Trust that even though certain things hurt in your marriage or in your business or in your life or just whatever, even when you're confused, even if it doesn't hurt, even if you're just confused, trust that I'm going to get the glory out of that. Trust I'm still going to make that for good. I just want those of you under the sound of my voice to know I can't stress this enough. God is just saying, trust him, especially during these times that many of you are confused and you don't think God is in it because we've been going through for, it's been eight months now, if we being honest. Many of you are hurting and you don't think God is in it. Many of you have been praying and feel like you haven't heard from God and you don't think he's in it. Many of you are losing sleep and you don't think God is in it. Many of you are crying yourself to sleep and you don't think God is in it. God told me to tell you he's been there the whole time, but trust him. You heard of him only one way. Get to know God for yourself. And once you know his character, God is of love. He's merciful. He's, he's sovereign. He's amazing. So when you know his character and then can understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling, maybe you don't understand to its full entirety, but you know God is of love. He's not doing this to hurt me. Although it feels like punishment God is trying to multiply me. God is trying to expose me to a whole lot. God is trying to prepare me. God is trying to equip me. God is trying to get me ready for the very thing that he has for me. If you didn't go through anything in your marriage, how could you help me with my kingdom marriages? Thank you, sis. I, God had to remind me on that. So what you so what you went through is encouragement for others. I appreciate it. And like I said, that's a reminder that God has to often remind me of. I had to allow things to happen. I, I had to allow something to happen so I could come in and get glory out of that, to make good out of that.
God does not trust everyone. He doesn't. But the Holy Spirit roams the earth. And the Holy Spirit is always looking for hearts. He's always searching the hearts of those that he can dwell on the inside and that God can cultivate and work with and use. So God looked, I can, I can, I can, this is what I want to use. I want to, I want kingdom in that. And because I want kingdom in that, I got to allow certain things to happen so I can use that. It's not going to feel good. If I told y'all God used my marriage and used me and everything felt peaches and cream, y'all not going to believe me because then again, thank you, Jesus. I will be one of those ones standing behind the pulpit telling you, you know, standing in the pulpit telling you, oh, God used my marriage and everything has been amazing. And he used my life and everything has been amazing. But I'm leaving out the part that hurt. I'm leaving out the part where he had to crush us. I'm leaving out the part where we were losing sleep. I'm leaving out the part that I cried myself to sleep at night. I'm leaving out the part when it was dark. I'm leaving out the part when I was confused. I'd be not 100% authentic about what it felt like when God decided to use my marriage, right? So if those leaders would be all the way authentic about the, this whole process, I really truly and honestly believe we would have more people fulfilling and manifesting the very thing that God has called and equipped them to do. I will trust you guys. Sis, trust him. It does not feel good. But y'all, I'm on here and I know, I'm not even going to say I hope. I know my word. The, I know the word that God allowed me to speak touched hearts. I know it opened hearts. I know it knocked on hearts. I know it tugged hearts. And I know that because it came from God. Was it an easy message to deliver? It wasn't. But I trusted God to fill my mouth that his one word could speak to each one of you under the sound of my voice right now. Prior to coming on here, I prayed, God, I want no flesh in this, none of me. Take me out of this, decrease me and increase on the inside of me. They may hear my voice, but it's your words that come out. Touch each and every one of them. Fill my mouth with what to say. I plan to be on here 15 minutes. We 37 minutes in. God wasn't done talking yet. I want y'all to be encouraged. I want y'all to trust God. And I want you to know that God is in it too. Not only trust God, I encourage you to get to know God for yourself. And see how amazing he is. So you can see the very things that you pray for, that peace that you pray for, but it feels like you're you're going through hell. God allowed that because now it can cultivate your peace, that strength that you've been praying for, but it feels like you're weak. God allowed that because he had to put you in a situation where normally your flesh would feel weak, but you could trust the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen you in the very thing that would have normally, what the enemy wanted to weaken you, to destroy you. So when we understand read our Bible and understand God's character, you'll realize the very things that you pray for, not only does God answer it and grant it, especially according to his will, but you will understand if I pray for strength, he's not just going to sprinkle some strength out of heaven. He's going to put me in situations where the enemy is allowed, hear me, allowed to come in and have me in storms that would have normally crushed me in the natural but I have to trust and depend on God. When you ask God for strength, he's going to put you in situations that in the flesh it requires, you're weak, you feel weak. Your strength has to come from him. He's not gonna have you like Popeye eating spinach or like He-Man. That's not how God works. He wants you to rely on him. He wants you to depend on him. So many of you have prayed for strength, but you feel the exact opposite. Guess what? God did that because your strength has to come from him. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to rely on him. He wants you to know when you're weak, that's when I can come in and give you that strength because that strength didn't come from your own power. It came from me. That peace you've been praying for, but you feel like your patience is being tested. I got to put you in situations to strengthen that peace. I got to put you in situations to strengthen that patience that you've been asking me for. But again, if we don't know God's character, we feel like everything that we pray for, thank you, Jesus, he's so good. We feel like everything that we've been praying for, our life is the complete opposite. Get to know God for yourself and you will see he does things in a way it doesn't feel good. But at the end, he's so good because it's, it's, it's a whole reason why he's allowing it to happen the way it happens. And again, church just makes it feel like the very things you pray for, God is like, you get a new car. You get a big house. You get a fat bank account. You get an increase in credit score. But a lot of blessings comes with terms and conditions. 
There are conditional blessings. There conditions come with it. There are things you have to go through to get the things that he has for you. Trust God and get to know God for yourself. God has a sense of humor. He really does. And sometimes I have to look back and laugh like, God, the other day I was telling some of my business partners that um, I was on my knees praying. I was like, Lord, give me patience. And in the middle of me saying patience, I stopped and had to laugh. I said, you about, you about to trust me. Um, you about to test me. <laughs> because I knew with me praying for patience, immediately the Holy Spirit started speaking. You know, a test is coming. I was like, God, can, can, I, can I pull that prayer back down from heaven? Because I know that means you're going to test me in the very area that I'm asking you for something else. It's going to feel like you're giving me the opposite. But if I know your character and I, I see things from your perspective, I'll know that this you're working out for my good also. Y'all, God is so dope. He really is. He is so amazing. But I encourage you, get to know him for yourself. I just thank God for using me and allowing me to share such a vulnerable message with each and every one of you, a, such a sensitive message with each and every one of you today, just be encouraged and know God is in that too. Whatever you're feeling, I promise if it feels like you're not hearing from him and your life feels like it's going through hell and you don't understand it and it's dark and you're confused, God is saying, trust me, I'm in that too. You've prayed to me, you think I don't hear your prayers, but I'm giving you, it looks opposite of what you prayed for. And remember when God speaks a promise over your life, your outside circumstances will always say the opposite. And the enemy's job is to come in and your mind is his playground. His job is to come in and manipulate your mind in such a way, play tricks on you, that what God spoke, he didn't really say. It's not going to happen. God, God's promise always, I can promise you that, always looks opposite from what you're currently in. If he spoke it, God is not a man that he shall lie. It will come to pass. The things, if I'm being honest, the things that God spoke over my life when he called me this year in 2020, when he called me to write this book, I've yet to see in its full entirety come to pass what God promised me. But he reminds me all the time, you're still going to get the very thing, but there are things you still have to go through. There are things that I still have to strip you from. There are things that I still have to work within you. There are things that I still have to prepare. The blessing is ready, but maybe I wasn't ready. Maybe I was ready. But you know, God got to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. God will orchestrate to make sure your enemies are set in place too so they can see the very thing that he's about to elevate you to do. God is in that too. Trust him. When it doesn't feel good, trust him. When you can't put your finger on it, trust him. When it's dark, trust him. When it hurts, trust him. When you're losing sleep, trust him. When you can't hear his voice, trust him. When the enemy's voice is loud and telling you the opposite, trust God. Be still and know that I'm a God. I am God. It is a process. It's definitely a process. Y'all be blessed. Stay prayed up. Trust God in whatever season you are in. Trust him. It's okay to tell God, God, I'm angry with you. I'm disappointed. I'm, my feelings are hurt. I'm frustrated. God knows your heart. So ain't no point in you fronting about it. It's okay to tell God that, but have it with a level of respect. God, I'm angry. God, I'm disappointed. God, I'm frustrated but I still give you the glory. I still trust you. I don't know what you're doing. And if I'm being honest, I don't like what you're doing, but I trust you. I wanted you to show up months ago and it hasn't come to pass yet, but I trust you. You spoke something over my life. I've yet to see it, but I trust you. When y'all can get honest with God, but yet still give him the glory, watch how God shows up in your life. Watch. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. This is good. Thank you for allowing God to use you. This is ministering to me at this very moment. Oh, Kita, how are you doing, love? When you can't trace him, yes, trust him. Y'all, share this live. Keep it going. Invite a friend. Tag someone who may need this word. This went longer than my flesh wanted to, but I did tell God to come in and use me however he saw fit. 45 minutes later, <laughs> God, you got a sense of humor. You know I got somewhere to be in 10 minutes. God is so good. He is so good. But y'all be blessed and stay prayed up. Stay in God's face and trust God with whatever season you're in. I promise. Just trust him. You're angry. I get it. You're confused. I get it. You're hurting. I get it. You don't understand. I get it. Trust him. I will see you guys next time. Y'all be blessed.